State Bowling. And now, here's your host, Frank Carpano. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the final edition of Bay State Bowling here on 27. I'm this is our final show as we give way to preview, and we're going out with a bang. We've got a very big show for you today because the Lincoln Greyhound jackpot will be the prize. There is $4,900 in the Lincoln Greyhound jackpot, and we have the three bowlers who came the closest to hitting the 302 string total and almost winning that jackpot in the past. They are back today to vie for that $4,900. This is the way we're breaking it up. $300 for the runner-up in the challengers match, $600 for the runner-up in the championship match, and the gentleman who wins it all today will win $4,000. Thousand dollars. Introduce you now to the two bowlers in today's challengers match. Please welcome him from Worcester, Paul Wambach, and from Lynn, Paul Doherty. I don't have their exact totals with me, but they were in the 280s when they came close to uh, that 300 total and almost winning the jackpot at that time. The gentleman who came the closest, I believe he was eight pins away, if I'm correct, 292, came that close to winning the jackpot. He's uh, our champion, so-called champion today. He will be in the championship match. Match, two-string championship match, just like the uh, regular men's format, only there's a lot more money on the line. We'll have the challengers match for you right after this. Welcome back to Bay State Bowling. Paul Wambach leads us off. Paul had a 282. Paul Wambach, that is. 282. And uh, 287 for Paul Doherty. These are the numbers that qualify these gentlemen for this special show. We should call it our Lincoln Greyhound Jackpot Show. Mike Morgan, who is our so called champion in this show. Had a 292 back on, uh, let's see, it was January 9th of 83. We've had the Lincoln Greyhound jackpot growing for 49 weeks. Also in that January 9th show, Paul Wombach had the 282. Both those were hit on the same day in the same show. Uh, Paul Doherty hit his on October 10th, 82. So these are the high rollers. And they are rolling for some big money today. $300 to the runner-up in the challengers match, 600 to the runner-up in the championship match, four grand, $4,000 to the winner of today's show. This is Paul Doherty. Bounce one down the middle, took out the middle. Before we get into the nitty gritty of the last two strings, Frank, I'd like to finish out my record keeping here as we have had some highlights over 14 years we're up to 1981 and in april of 1981 you joined the show i did no yep, first time mm -hmm. so you're actually i guess in your third year here that was in april of 81 a month before then terry knife had threw a 151 but lost to larry avery who had a 161 and larry avery threw our seventh triple strike at that time Oh, I can through the middle. 1981, Charlie Jutras came back and won 10 straight again. He'd won eight straight, came back and won 10 straight. Let's see why he was our all-time winner. That's the first thing that comes to mind when I remember those early days. That Mr. Jutras, huh? <coughs> Excuse me, my first hosting days here on Bay State Bowling. Charlie Jutras also on... November 1st, 81, when during that streak, hit our eighth triple strike and our first Balsam's trip, which incidentally is still alive today. If somebody hits a triple, they'll go to Balsam's, Dixville, Nice, New Hampshire. All right. Paul Wambach, 18 through two. Paul Doherty, 16 through two. Well, the slow scores so far, beautiful try, might be due to a few butterflies. But they have hit the head pin. Paul made a nice try there. The wood just didn't catch that pin. He just knocked over. Ten box for Wambach. 28 through three. Now, 
missed the head pin, got a bad, good break. Spare for Paul Wamba. On the outside. That's our first mark of the day. Paul Doherty steps up now. The tenseness of this match may make it a low scoring match. Uh, may not. Maybe they'll get loose when they get into the championship series and really open up. Right now the bowls seem a little tight. I love it. This is, this is a lot of money right it's now. Fun, this isn't match. it? Huh? Not your money either. <laughs> Be tough if your money was on the line. Okay. Money does come from the Lincoln Greyhound Park in Lincoln, Rhode Island, and it includes a night at the races. So whoever the winner is has a chance to double his money. That's right. Okay, the first spare for Paul Darty. Paul Wambach drops eight. A spare opportunity once again. He's got 46 through four. Be careful of this one. Oh, covered it nicely. You didn't want to lose that back pin. There it is again, nice and smooth. Didn't like the punch. Take his pins. Lost that one a little bit. And of course, last year, our classic, Tony Marie Brassard, 374, Station Zernike 346 in 1982. Tom Ulster with a 422 over Lee Bergeron, 382 in 1982 in the Pro Bowlers Classic. Ernie Nally that year had our ninth triple strike. Oh, a little bit off the head pin, but if that wood turns, that'll be a nice leave. And of course, to finish out in 1983, Tony Marie Bassad came back again, 348 over Betty Prey, 317. And if you remember that spectacular match in which uh, Peter Flynn threw the spear over in the last box to mm. beat Joe Donovan, 380 to 379, our last big highlight so far of 1983 until today. today's match. No one goes home a loser. Nope. The third place finisher will go home with what is ordinarily the winner's prize money, $300. The runner up in the championship match goes home with $600, four grand, $4,000 to the winner of today's show. And of course, uh, a night at the races and that's important because that's, I've been there. It's a beautiful place, the Queen of Clubs Lounge. And I'm sure whoever the winner is, they'll enjoy the evening. Mm -hmm. I would second that. All the fine folks down there, Al Ross. One more mention, uh, 1983. If we hadn't uh, discontinued base state bowling, Terry Meacham and Mike Sachar would have been back in July to continue on as Scotch doubles champions. They are the retiring Scotch doubles champions from the Springfield area. Terry Meacham and Mike Sachar. Paul Wambach has a seven pin lead through six in this match. Well, the ball is again uh, struggling a bit. 
A little bit of tension there. Pressing very hard for the head pin, and they're getting a little too much of it, although this turned out to be pretty well for it. Split, but uh, not a bad piece of wood. Ouch. Hit that, and uh, if he'd gone behind it a little bit, might have turned to the right and taken number 10. Gains two. 75-70 through seven. Paul Wambach still leads the match. Waiting in the wings, Mike Morgan. Face the winner of this match. Oh, boy. Mike's just sitting there relaxing, so I'm glad this is not happening to me. <laughs> Okay, a little problem to come. A little problem with the balls coming back, but they're returning now. Even the balls are adding to the tension here today, Lorraine. It's gotten very quiet, you know, this way. The audience is waiting for, waiting for a big splash down there. Well. 85-79, Wambach by six. Well, Paul doesn't want to rest on this six-pin lead. He would like a mark. Not a bad setup. Yes, that was a big pressure shot. He's got to be under a lot of tension up there. Just trying to get into the finals. Wants that head pin. Got it, but not too much of it. Well, a 10 box here is very, very important, Frank. He has a six pin lead and he's gained five more. It gives him 11. If he can get a 10, he'll force uh, Paul Doherty to get two marks. Big ball. Well, it's not a tremendous string, but takes a 111 to beat it, and he needs two marks to get that 111. 110 for Wambach. I don't think I could stand a tie, Frank. <laughs> I don't think the bowl is good. Well, needs the double. the score. Wambach finishing with a 110. That does it. It'll be a red shirt against a red shirt. Both of them wearing sports shirts. Brilliant red. Mike and Paul. And Mr. Doherty looks like he'll break the 100 barrier. Three or better. Kind of figured this challenge match would be tense and slow. Okay, so Paul Wambach advances to the championship match with a 110-104 victory over Paul Darty. We'll have more Bay State Bowling show number 682, the final in the string. <laughs> Coming up right after this. Paul Wambach will lead us off in the championship match. $4,000 on the line today. Paul's ball seems to be alive and working. He's just gonna get it on the head pin more. Seems fitting that these two return. They were the Two bowls, of course, who qualified, but Paul and Mike both bowled each other back on January 
1983, and in that match, Mike won 292 to 282. They both had a tremendous day. Mm. So it's fitting their back, rolling for what is remaining now, $4,600. Needs the push, he got the push, but it slid over instead of falling down. Ten boxes for Paul Wambach. Now Mike Morgan steps up. He's been sitting idly by during the challengers match. Now steps up for the first time. Got a little bit of a break there. I thought he was going to go through the hole. Well, you get a bad punch. You just want to get your nine or ten. Pick your pins. Very early and very close. Doesn't look like it's going to be the type of match where uh, somebody's going to run away and hide with a lot of marks. Could happen. See Mike Morgan's high single, 188. Okay. The early lead to Paul Wambach. Yeah, a little break there. He hit it a little full, thought he was going to punch through. Carried the right side and has a little guide. Good hit. Object pin the two pin. Carry him into the wood and actually glanced away from the center. Three ten boxes for Wombach. Now this is the last of the last taping shows for basically bowling. And of course we would like to Mention a few people that have been with the show over the years, the last 14 years. Before we get to that, nice make shot. Make sure. Uh, First good. mark of the match turned in by Paul Wambach. That we mention our illustrious crew, especially the one that's here today Bruce Harnett, Pete Hadonesian, Mary McDonough, waving at us right here, Maxine Garrett. Mark Carboni, Kevin Hannum, and the illustrious director, Charlie Lucci. That's the crew working today's show. Mr. Hannum wanted me to mention that uh, he's going into the promotion field, sports promotion. And good. No good, no good. That's an eight. And Mr. Hannum said that his first big promotion is coming up in the fall, but he doesn't want to say anything about it now. No. So Kevin will... Wait for that big splash in the fall. Ouch. A one and a three. Strange hits down there. Nice one. Oh. Yes. A slow motion spare. Yeah, Correct up the bowlers, correct up the crowd. Strike on spare. <laughs> Wouldn't it be something if through all this one of our bowlers hits 300 today? <laughs> well, they really deserve the money, then I guess. We should point out that that doesn't have to happen in order to win the money. Nope, you just gotta beat your opponent. Oh, only six, however. Builds up a little bit of a lead there.
quite get up there. Well, through four, Paul Wambach has the lead by eight pins. Make it through five now that Wambach has a lead of 14 pins by virtue of that strike at number five. I want to mention also some of the people who have been responsible for presenting the program. That will be our sponsors. Of course, uh, I'd like to thank Bob Harmon for allowing us to come into Thunderbird Bowl uh, for the last three years and do the tapings. And Bob Murray down at Arby's for presenting us certificates for, I guess, maybe eight to ten years now. Dennis Travis, Marlboro Sporting Goods, for his beautiful trophies for not only this show, but all the formats, including the classic. We are through six in the first string of this championship match with four thousand dollars riding on this match we're back with more of the final edition of bay state bowling right after this paul wambach leading by 12 pins in this match lead this off final portion first string another punch though want to finish off with it our sponsors, Dave Novier, of course, down at Wilson's Bowling Supply, 203 Street, in Worcester. People at Balsam's in New Hampshire for their jackpots, which we've, I guess we've had two or three hits down there. And, of course, Al Ross at beautiful Lincoln Greyhound Park is presenting us with the jackpot money of $4,900, of which $300 has already been taken care of. Nice shot. Paul Wombach with a good 10. 84 now through 7. Just got to catch the side of that pin somewhere. They're getting too much of it. By the end of the show, we're going to bring everybody up. Everybody's coming up. Everybody, and we mean everybody. We're going to have Lorraine and... Jim and Bob and Pete come up. Yep. Have the crew lock down the cameras and come out front. Yeah, a little bit on autopilot. <laughs> well, opportunity for Mike. Down 12, two open boxes to beat. Ten and a seven, but another one through the middle. Imagine all the things you could do with $4,000. Yeah. I'm sure that has to be going through these bowlers' minds right now. Although probably the best approach would be to put it out of your mind. Don't even think about it. There we go. All but number seven. They have to create themselves some leads here. They haven't been doing that. There's a chance for Mike. Pretty much tie it up here. Whew. Spare for Mike Morgan. I'd like to mention a few more crew members who have been with us over the years. Jeff Hardman, Ron Bogotowski. Coach Coltrane, who was here at the beginning. Dave Pino, Jim O'Donnell, who is now down south, working with number 10. That's right, Channel 10. Channel 10, Rhode Island. Give them a good push. Ben Kozik. They're paying all the bills now. Yeah, nice mark by Paul. And of course, the infamous Bobby Allen, one of our finest directors, he used to do the show years ago. Don't want to forget Ray Boyer, who directed this program for, gee, I guess uh, maybe 10 years, 8, 10 years, now working with Channel 38. Seventeen, the total for Paul Wambach in the first string of two. There are a few people behind the scenes at the station. Channel 27, Bobby Parmenter. Don Riley, of course. 
Danny Viles, sales. Greg Lano, chief of sales. Tommy Powers, downstairs. Six through nine for Mike Morgan. Paul Wambach leads by 11 pins. There's a shot. It's a special mention to Ray Condon who brought the show here originally. Original format started on channel 56 back uh, before 1970. Base State Building originated in 1970 in January. There's that shirt. There's Jim with that shirt on, boy. That's Watch out that's, for that shirt. That's, we're going to get that at the end of the show. We're <laughs> going to get Jim out there. Oh, one way to do it. The wood's all uh, down there, and I can use it. I'll use it, says Mike. On the spare for Mr. Morgan, a seven. So he finishes the string with a 113 and trails now by just four pins. Going into the final string, $4,000 to today's winner. And we'll have 600 to the runner up in this championship match. Not bad money at all. Final show of Bay State Bowling number 682 after 14 years. We're back with more after this. Paul Wambach has a four pin lead and he'll lead us off in the second string. Paul is from Worcester, bowls out of Colonial. Mike from Lynn. Doesn't have the uh, lanes that he bowls out of. Somewhere in Lynn. Yeah, we'll call right out in a minute and find out where. All right. Of course, none of the uh, bowling shows in the state would be possible without the bowlers coming in here. And of course, they're provided by the Mass New Hampshire Maine Bowling Associations. They have roll-offs, and we'd like to thank them for providing the bowlers, along with the WCBC professional bowlers who helped us out with the classic. And of course, I did mention last week, I think, that we would be mentioning some Oh, hit the cap and lost it. Boy. Mentioning some uh, semi-personalities and celebrities that were here over the years. One, of course, that comes to mind is Reverend Bates, who used to come in and say a few words over the years from out of the combat zone in Boston. <laughs> used to work there and helping out the people in the area. Did a fine job, actually. And, of course, there was uh, Admiral Birdcage, I'm going back a few years for those who have watched the show for a long time. I don't, don't know really how to explain Admiral Birdcage, but he was here and he did say a few words a couple times. Oh, Mike went by the mark. And our famous of all, of course, was Earl Gard, who was here, I guess, maybe for eight to ten years. Changing his outfits every day, every show. Nice person. Some of the people who stop by say hello during some of the taping sessions. I don't want to forget Ernie Sawyer, who was in my chair, I guess, for a few shows back in the first few weeks of 1970. Of course, back then was the infant day of the show, and we used to bust the kids over from Thunderbird to help build up the audience. They loved it. Nines for Mike Morgan. <clears throat> Doesn't change anything. Nope. Yes. Strike for Paul Wambach. We're heading towards a big payday. Oh, 
Nice spot for a back-to-back -back mark here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Spare on strike for Paul Wambach. Uh, they had pin, and let's see. They only have to send one pin in the corner. Ouch. Along with, of course, our people who have come by and actually visited us on the microphone, there have been some people in the audience over the years that have stayed with us. Don't know all their names, but uh, of course, Alice from North Row, uh, she's back here today for the final show. Hasn't been feeling too well, but she's back with us, smiling. Clarence. Young Clarence with his glasses. Clarence is here today. And Big Steve from New Hampshire. We wouldn't want to leave without saying hi to Big Steve. I don't know whether he shows up here for the bowling or the hot dogs. <laughs> Ouch, again. See if we can point out some of these people to you, because they're always here. Clarence is right on the end, front row, center. Uh, nice. Not a bad out for Mike. He was in a struggle there. Clarence keeps score with Lorraine, and he has the records as everything. far back as, as he's been coming. Every pin, every, he's got everything down, all the records. Yes! Oh, big one now. down a little bit but still he has up to 27 pin lead of course we can't go away without forget talking about a few people that have been behind the major mike mike norton filled in back i don't remember the exact year for a few weeks when uh, mr entertainment was on vacation of course mr entertainment is otherwise known as mr superlative or robert foraker who is now doing very well in other fields he was with the show, I guess, up until 1981. Oh. Well, the prospect doesn't look any brighter for Mike Morgan. Forgot, have I forgotten anybody, Frank? No, I think you got them all. The only one I haven't mentioned are, of course, the people who are it's working. Amazing how on that one sheet of paper. <laughs> One sheet. Everything you want to know about Bay State Bowling is right on this desk. Yeah, we haven't mentioned ourselves, and we probably won't. You know who we are. Would like to mention Steve Velasquez, Pete Velasquez, Bob Richards, Lorraine Richards, and Jim Richards. All right, and with those names, we take a break as Mike Morgan has just rolled a strike. Back with the final portion of this match right after this. Pin lead in this match as he leads off the final portion, the final show. After 681. Oh, gonna rock and it's gonna stay. Lost it. There's a life. Life for Mike. Now, Paul has, except for a couple of occasions, I think he had a couple of eight boxes, uh, one seven. He's been picking his pins pretty well. Nice light hit again. Creating some good opportunities. There's the spare for Paul Wambach. Shot. 
spare for Mike Morgan. Down to 25. Down to 16. They're going to take us to the end. 16 pins. What a way to finish. What a way Whew. to finish. $4,000 today's winner. Here's Paul filling the spare. Yes. Strike on spare. Oh. Whew. You are seeing some great bowling here today. Pressure bowling. <laughs> oh, Lorraine's giving me goosebumps over here. <laughs> She's going crazy. Oh. Well, he's looking for a 150 anyway. Whew. Like you said, he may come close to hitting it anyway. He's got 117 plus a 150 game going. No, he didn't make it. 149, which may be an omen. Mike Morgan working on a spare. 266. So we need the 153. I wouldn't save any chance without a double. Oh, beautiful pocket hit. Whew. Doesn't need the wood there. Needs this pin and a double. Wait a minute. Oh, it's still in it. Take your time, Mike. Get a third ball out of the gutter. Well, let's see. We'll give him a strike on that. It'll be 122. No. Well, needs that. Needs that double. Not enough. Mr. Wambach is going to put $4,000 in the bank. Wow. <laughs> that is great. That's great. And Mr. Morgan made a trip not for nothing, 600 And of course, the other fellow with 300 there. We saw some Sorry. great bowling today on our final show. Paul Wambach winning the $4,000 Lincoln Greyhound jackpot. $600 to Mike Morgan. 266 for Wambach, 241 for Morgan. We're back to talk with our bowlers right after this. Welcome back to Bay State Bowling. We had ourselves one very exciting show. I'd like to introduce you to the bowlers who you just saw in the past hour. First, the gentleman who'll take home $300 for uh, his efforts in the Challengers match. Losing out, however, with a 104, Paul Darty from Lynn. Well, you ran into a very tough bowler there, all oh. the same. It was a uh, good effort, $300. I'll take it. Nice yes. money. Yes, sir. Well, it's nice to have, Great to have you with us on the uh, last show here. Thank you, Frank. Thank you very much. Okay, why don't you just stay, stay right here, because we're going to bring the other bowlers up. Uh, the gentleman who... Uh, had an opportunity to sit out in the Challengers match and wait till the championship match to get started. He turned out a 113, a 128 for a 241 two string total from Lynn Mike Morgan. <laughs> Tell me, were you nervous out there knowing that $4,000 was riding on the line? Uh, I didn't feel nervous, but I think I threw the ball like I was. Yeah. I was a little tight with the ball. Well, we've got $600 for you. I should give you this. That's the check. Thank you very much, and I've got your check. All right, you don't want to leave without that, right? Hang on, guys. Uh, we want to bring up uh, the champion now from Worcester with a 117, a 149, 266, two-string total, Paul Wambach. <laughs> Congratulations. Any thoughts on what you're going to do with the money? Um, not yet, not yet. I've got some yeah. friends that are willing to spend it. I think you have quite a few right in the audience here that are looking for their for their handouts. Yeah. 
I tell you what, we don't have a check for you because uh, that, <laughs> no, wait, that, pri that privilege has been reserved for the gentleman who has provided the money in the Lincoln Greyhound jackpot, the owner of Lincoln Greyhound. We'd like to uh, go to Lincoln Greyhound now in a presentation that was taped after the show, Mr. Al Ross. Al? And thank you, Frank. And here we are at Lincoln Greyhound Park, the beautiful queen of clubs room high atop the grandstand. And with me, the winner of the great Lincoln Greyhound Park Channel 27 bowling jackpot of $4,900, Paul Wambach from Worcester with Paul, his family. Paul, who, who did you bring with you tonight? Brought a friend of mine, Bunny, and my father and my mother. Well, that's great. And Paul, all, all I can say is that 149 that you threw at Mike Morgan in that second string was just a thing of beauty. And we're just thrilled to uh, have been a part of this bowling show with Channel 27. And what is your next tournament coming up? Um, we got a new tour that's starting up during the summer, the CBA. That's starting up next month, so we have a few things going on during the summer, too. Well, that's great. Well, unofficially, you're representing Lincoln Greyhound Park, and we're going to follow your career from this point on. Great. And on behalf of all of us here at Lincoln Greyhound Park, I'd like to present you this check in the amount of $4,000. That should make a very pleasant summer for you and your friend and family. Sure, sure. And I'd like to thank the people down here at Lincoln Greyhound uh, Track for putting up this money for us to shoot for a really nice prize for us to shoot for. Well, Paul, it's been our pleasure. And now back to the Thunderbird Bowl and Frank Carpano. All right, welcome back here to the Thunderbird Bowl. And uh, in addition to our bowlers, we have a few other people we'd like to thank here on our final show. You've heard many names in the past hour, but right now we'd like to put some faces to some of the names, some of the people that have been with us here on a week-to-week -week basis. First, we'd like to bring up our scorekeeper at the table a lady who helps keep us going here on week to week, Lorraine Richard. <laughs> Lorraine, so nice to see you. Thank you. Yeah, everybody see you. Turn Thank right you. around. It's been nice being here. Yeah, well, it's been nice working with you. And uh, we're going to see each other again. You're going to come down to uh, our Rhode Island way and see me. And I'd love to. And, and we just wanted to make sure that everybody got a good chance to see Lorraine because you have many friends out there. Oh, thank you. And thank, thank you. you very much. <laughs> All right, Lorraine Richard, you stay right up here. If you want to come around here, okay. And a gentleman who Lorraine knows intimately, her husband, Jim Richard, who has been handling the big tote board and the lob line. Jim, we finally get to see that shirt. Well, Jim's a great guy. He's always got plenty of jokes for me every week, none of which we can repeat on the air, however. <laughs> it's been a pleasure working with you. It's been a genuine pleasure to me, too, Frank. Oh, very yeah. good. How many years has it been for you? Fourteen and a half. Fourteen and a half. They have been here from the very start. Yes. Thank you very much, Jim. It's been a pleasure. All right, now another gentleman who's been switching off on the tote board and lob line, Pete Velasquez. Pete, come on up. Nice working, nice with, working you. with you. Nice working with you. Representing the TV27 crew, Kevin Hannum. Come on up, Kevin. <laughs> Best of luck to you and your future endeavors. Thank you. All right. Good luck to you. From the Thunderbird Bowl, the gentleman who has been on the uh, foul line, Bob Richards. <laughs> Bob, pleasure working with you. Thank you very much. All right, we save uh, the, the best for last, right? The gentleman who's helped me out here tremendously, Dave Adams, ladies and gentlemen. Just like to thank all of you for tuning in for the past 14 years. For Dave Adams and the entire crew, these are the people we speak of. I'm Frank Carpano. Thank you all very much. TV 27 Sports, in conjunction with the Massachusetts Bowling Association, has brought you Bay State Bowling with Frank Carpano and Dave Adams. Bay State Bowling has been a pre-recorded presentation of TV 27 Sports. TV 27 Sports and lots more. Kunta Kinte marries and celebrates.